Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Love Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another quick video. Today, we're here at the shop once again. They called me out to come take a look at a 2013. This is a Chevrolet Silverado 5.3 engine. Now, what they're telling me is that they have a cylinder misfire on number eight, and they've already replaced the plugs, the coil, um, they replaced the injector. They uh, also replaced the ignition wires. So at this point, they're thinking it might be a mechanical issue, but they wanted me to check it out. Anyways, let me take you guys over to the vehicle and we'll check it out. All right, so they've got the truck over here on the alignment rack and I've already got my scan tool connected. So let's move inside the truck. Okay, so today we're gonna be using this X tool. This is the IP508. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition on. I've got the key right here. Power this thing up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on auto scan. This is going to automatically detect the VIN number. This is just the base level radio. This one does have automatic AC, so we'll hit auto. I'm not sure if this one has trailer brake or not, but we'll just hit without. Under 8,600 gross vehicle weight. We'll just say with and without. Okay, so there's our VIN number. There's our vehicle information right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. Then we'll go to system diagnose. Now this tool basically has the ability to communicate with four different modules on the vehicle. You can see them right here. We have the airbag module, we have the brake module, we have the transmission, and we have the engine control module. And so today we're gonna be doing engine control module. And we'll go ahead and read trouble codes, diagnostic trouble code, specified DTC. And here we have our trouble codes. You can see starting up at the top, we have a PO300. That is a random misfire detected. And then we also have this PO352 ignition coil two uh, circuit control. That's an interesting one. Then we have ignition coil number eight circuit control PO358. Now, as far as these two coil circuit controls, um, I'm not exactly sure if we should really look too much into these because I believe what the mechanic was telling me is that they swapped over coils and so these codes may have been set whenever they were swapping coils and they did tell me that the misfire was happening only on cylinder number eight so we might just go ahead and clear the trouble codes and we'll see if these come back but right now i think what i want to do is go ahead and start the truck up and we're going to see if we can feel this misfire and so what they're telling me is that this misfire is only happening during idle they don't really notice it so much when they're driving or accelerating uh, at higher RPM, but during idle is when they really feel it. And I can tell you right now, I already feel this engine shaking pretty badly. And again, you can see the check engine light is illuminated right there. And right now we're sitting at idle. Like I said, this truck is shaking pretty bad. So I definitely feel like we have a misfire. Um, I think what I wanna do is let's go ahead and back out of here. And then we're gonna go into live data and we're gonna see if we have information for misfire. So here we have uh, some data PIDs that are grouped together. Here we have misfire, so we're gonna go ahead and click on misfire. And what we have here is our misfire counter. So starting up here at the top, we have cylinder number one. You can see we have zero misfires. Cylinder number two, zero misfires. Cylinder number three, zero. Cylinder number four, zero. Cylinder number five, zero. Cylinder number six, zero. And let's see here, cylinder number seven. Uh, we don't have any misfires there, but if you guys look at number eight, take a look at that. We're up to 180, uh, getting to 190. Let's see here. Yeah, 190, and then it started all over again. So we definitely have a misfire here on cylinder number eight that's happening right now. So I definitely think we need to focus on cylinder number eight here. Okay, so moving under the hood, let me show you guys. This is our engine, and I don't know if you can tell or not by the camera, but this engine is shaking pretty bad. And so we definitely have a dead misfire here now. According to our information, it's saying that we have a misfire on cylinder number eight. And cylinder number eight is going to be the very back cylinder on this side of the engine. And so let's just start by doing a visual inspection. Okay, so here's our ignition coil back there. And again, you can see that they did replace the wires. They did replace the plug. Um, and what they're telling me is that they didn't actually replace the coil. They did swap them over. And so I think that's what happened is they swapped number eight over with number two. And so that's why we had the control circuit codes. And so again, I'm not gonna concern myself too much with that. Uh, they did tell me that they also swapped over the injectors and he told me that uh, he did a spark check and pulled the plug wire to see whether or not there was spark coming out and he said there was really strong spark coming out of that wire and so this coil looks like it is firing you know they've done the basic checks already these guys obviously know what they're doing and visually i don't really see anything that's obvious i mean this wiring is exposed here but none of it is broken none of it's chewed up or torn so i don't think our problem is really going to be anywhere in the wiring here so let's go ahead and move on to our next test i think what i want to try to do next is maybe a relative compression check again we're trying to eliminate the possibility of having a mechanical issue here so i think a relative compression test is just a quick easy way to eliminate that 
Actually, guys, you know what? Before I get ahead of myself, there is one thing that I think we should do, and that is clear the code. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key off and then turn it back on. And then let's move back over to the scan tool and uh, let's clear our trouble codes. Because again, we did have some circuit codes and I'm not exactly sure if those were there beforehand or not. And so we're gonna go back into the engine control module and we're gonna see if we can clear these codes and then we'll see if they come back. And so clearing trouble codes successful. Let's see what we got here. No trouble codes present. Come back in here, no trouble code. Okay, so it looks like we were able to clear the codes, but let's go ahead and start this thing up, cycle the key off and then back on, start the engine up. You know, sometimes codes won't set until you actually run the engine. And so I'm gonna let this thing run for just a few seconds. There we go. You guys see that? The check engine light just came on and it's flashing. So let's go back in here and see what trouble code got set. We got our PO300 here. That's the one that came back immediately. I don't see the circuit code. And again, you can see the check engine light is flashing right now, telling us that we do have a current misfire. And uh, I guess I could back out of here and then try it again just to make sure that, uh, you know, the code didn't pop back up. So let's go back in here. Yeah, we still only have the PO300, no coil circuit code. All right, guys, so fast forward. I've got the lab scope connected. Everything is hooked up. We're ready to do the relative compression test. Now, if you guys wanna know how I hook this lab scope up, you're gonna have to buy my premium course. It's $199 for one day. No, I'm just kidding, guys, totally. Let me show you how I have this thing set up. So you guys can see I'm on two channels. And so the first channel, uh, basically what I did was I connected my positive lead here to the fuse box and I connected my negative lead here to the ground on the uh, alternator bracket. Then you can see my second channel. Uh, the green wire is going over to our control wire of the cylinder number eight coil. I know it's kind of dark back there, but we are back probed on the coil control wire for the cylinder number eight. Then over here at the fuse box, what I went ahead and did was I took out the starter relay and I put one of these relay switches in its place. And so this allows me to crank the engine over right here at the fuse box. This came in my kit for my uh, relay tester kit made by Lyle Tool. I will leave a link down in the description below, though I think the relay switches are sold separately. So I'll try to find a link for those and I'll leave them in the description if you guys are interested. But essentially right now, if I wanna crank this engine over, all I gotta do is flick this switch on this relay. Now over here on my lab scope, essentially we have our two channels and on the channel one, in order to read this, we're gonna be looking at voltage. And what I went ahead and did was I AC coupled this signal. And so if we come over here, you can see that uh, I've got the signal AC coupled so that we're only gonna be seeing the up and down movement of the signal here. Then the other important thing is that I have the signal inverted. Remember, every time the starter encounters a compression stroke, the amperage is going to rise. And when amperage rises, voltage drops. And so we're gonna be looking at voltage. And so rather than watching the voltage drop, we wanna be seeing the voltage rise. And so that's how we're gonna get our relative compression. And then on channel two, I basically just, uh, we're looking at the voltage. If I go down to channel two, and so I'm on a 10 volt scale here. So we're just gonna be looking at the signal. It's usually a zero to five volt signal from the computer. So I've already got my trigger set up. Let me go ahead and get ready to pause this image. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over. So we're gonna flick our switch. You guys can see the engine is cranking and it is drawing up our waveform. We'll crank it for just a few seconds here and we'll shut it off. And then we'll pause this image here. So I paused it and then we'll go back into movie mode. And so we'll go back in time and we'll take a look at our capture. You can see here, this is our cylinder number eight coil firing event. And uh, if we follow it back here, you can see that uh, every time that cylinder number eight shows up, you can see that we have our coil control happening. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. So we'll go over here to the magnifying glass. We'll zoom out two times. That way we can get a better overall view. And so here we have it guys, take a look at our relative compression. And uh, what I noticed already just from this capture is that uh, we don't have much of a peak as far as this cylinder number eight goes. Look at the top here of all of these cylinders. Now I'm not exactly sure of the firing order, but uh, if you look, let's count between um, the signals here. So I'm gonna find one. Let's see if we got a capture. Yeah, right here we have a capture where we have cylinder number eight and then cylinder number eight again. So we can count, there should be eight cylinders between these two points, which is 720 degrees of crank rotation. And so starting here, we have our cylinder number eight. And so again, I don't know the firing order, so we're just gonna count uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one again. Of course, that's not one, that's eight. I'm just letting you guys know that uh, this is eight cylinder or compression stroke events happening 
between this point here and this point here. And so one of the things I do notice is that the spark seems to be happening right on time. So we do have a spark happening right at top dead center. Uh, the only thing that I notice here is the compression is a little bit low. Now, I wouldn't exactly call this a dead hole. Usually, if we have no compression on the cylinder, we just won't have any hump at all. Here, we still have a hump, but you can see that obviously this hump is not as high as far as the peak goes compared to the rest of them. Again, that's why they call this relative compression because it's relative to the next one or the one next to it. So again, this one relative to this one and this one is good, right? But this one relative to this one and this one is not good. And so that's what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of go down the line. You can see again, our peak here for that hump is lower than the rest of them. And moving back in time here, you can see that here the peak looks a little closer to what the rest of them look like. And move back over here. Again, kind of the same thing. Our peak is kind of matching here a little bit. It's not. Uh, as much of a difference here. You can see it is a little bit low um, And then that's the start of our event here. So again uh, moving back out You can see that here our compression looks a little bit low Move over here our compression looks a little bit low here. It looks a little bit low and Obviously right here. It looks a little bit lower But over here you can see that it looks pretty much even with the rest of them now, as far as what that could mean, obviously it could mean that we might have some type of mechanical issue. However, we can't rule out the fact that because we have a misfire, we might actually have cylinder wash happening in that cylinder, meaning that because the injector is still firing, but combustion is not happening, the fuel is basically washing down the cylinder walls and causing the compression in that particular cylinder to drop. And so that might be what we're seeing here. I'm not exactly sure, but this is definitely gonna require some more testing. All right guys, so what I'm actually doing here is I am running the engine with the cylinder number eight fuel injector disconnected so that we can eliminate any possibility of having cylinder wash and so that we can get a nice coat of oil on the cylinder walls. That way we can come back around and do another relative compression test. All right guys, so I'm back for round two of this relative compression test. I wanted to see if I can get a cleaner capture. And so what I did was I switched over to using my amp clamp. You can see that I have it on the positive battery cable going down to the starter. And then also I've got my lead here going to our cylinder number eight coil firing control circuit. And so I'm gonna go ahead and crank this engine over. Again, I've got the relay switch installed. Let's go ahead and crank it. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and pause this. Let's go ahead and take a look at our waveform. I'm gonna go ahead and start scrolling back in time. And uh, you can see here, let me back out and move this up a little bit here. Well, let's move it right there in the center. And then I'm going to move channel one. And so I'm gonna bring that down. Now, again, you can already see cylinder number eight here. Definitely looks lower than all of the other cylinders. Let's start scrolling back in time here. Again, there's our cylinder number eight and check out, you see how the peaks match. So right here we have good compression. And if you look over here, we have cylinder number eight again. And again, you can see we have low compression. So again, low compression right here. Look at the peaks of these humps. You can see it a lot clearer now. This capture is a lot more cleaner. And so as I scroll back in time, now take a look here, cylinder number eight, good compression. So our compression up here is good. And so if I keep scrolling back in time, again, we keep seeing this happen. Low compression on this one and low compression here low compression here but then look at here we have good compression here so now this is something you would probably never capture by using a traditional compression gauge using a traditional compression gauge is only going to show you the peak pressure you would never know that the compression is actually low at times even doing a running compression test with a gauge it would be very difficult to catch those moments where the compression is low so this is why it's critical to learn how to use a lab scope so that you can detect problems like this. At this point, I'm pretty confident that this engine has to get disassembled in order to take a look inside. Now, obviously that's something that the shop is gonna have to take up with the customer, whether or not the customer wants to put the money into fixing the truck. I really have nothing to do with that, but I'll keep you guys updated on what happens. But as far as I'm concerned, our job here is done. Two weeks later. All right guys, so unfortunately, after doing our diagnosis, the customer ultimately decided not to continue with the teardown of the engine. Now, I did talk to the mechanic and he did tell me that he went ahead and removed the valve cover just to take a look inside. However, he wasn't able to find anything that was obviously wrong. 
Now, as far as our issue with the intermittent compression, where the compression was kind of coming and going on our cylinder number eight, this is usually a symptom of some type of valve sealing issue. Now, when I say valve sealing, this could mean anything from a broken valve spring to a bent push rod to uh, maybe even a bad lifter or a worn out camshaft. Also a failed valve seat in the cylinder head could cause this type of issue. The only real way for us to know exactly what is wrong is we need to remove the cylinder head and take a look inside. Unfortunately, like I said, the customer just wasn't prepared financially to go that route. And so the truck is kind of on the back burner. Hopefully we'll get some kind of update later on. But for now, I feel like we've done pretty much everything we can do short of disassembling the engine. Now, as far as the Xtool IP508, if you guys are interested, on getting your hands on one of these, I will leave a link in the description down below. I'm also gonna be leaving a coupon code down there. This scan tool is definitely a good bang for your buck. Like I said before, this thing has the capability of connecting with four different modules on the vehicle. That includes the engine control module, the transmission control module, the ABS module, and your airbag module, which are pretty much typically the most common modules that you're gonna be dealing with, especially if you're a DIY user. Now, as far as the giveaway, I wanna start off by saying thank you guys for watching to the end of the video. If you want a chance to win one of these for free, all you gotta do is comment down below x tool giveaway stay tuned to the channel because i will be going live to announce the winner check the description down below you can find the date and time and the rules for the contest anyways that concludes today's video like i always say thank you guys for watching i hope you found the video useful informational educational entertaining if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next one good luck